Whew, okay, back from the dead. By the way, do not recommend that whole norovirus thing. One out of ten would not recommend. I've been sick as a dog more so than I have since I was a kid for the past ten days. But nonetheless, Matt Schifferly here with another video on the RDP YouTube channel. Today we're addressing top tips and ways to avoid burnout. Because after all, the number one reason for people to fail in reaching their objectives when it comes to losing weight, building muscle and stuff, is they work too hard and they burn themselves out and they just can't continue. After all, how in the world can you expect to run a marathon if you just run as fast as you can right out of the gate? And today we're gonna be sharing with you top tips on how to go the distance and get to that destination you want. So tip number one, Kitty Cat Enzo always recommends, is think of a more holistic approach to pushing your limits, so to speak. Uh, this isn't so much about you should always push as hard as possible. When you make your entire game plan for success, I'm just gonna work myself to death, then you're basically playing chicken against that proverbial wall of running smack dab into it and either crashing or stopping. In other words, we want to make sure that we have multiple ways of making progress. So let's take the humble push-up for example. If your goal is to just do as many push-ups as you possibly can every single day, yes, you will make quite a bit of progress initially, but you just can't scale hard work indefinitely. Eventually you're gonna run against that wall of how far or how hard you can push yourself and at that point you're just pushing yourself to your max all the time to stay in a plateau. Instead we want to have multiple ways of progress. So yes, adding repetitions and doing more repetitions of push-ups certainly viable. You can also improve things like technique and tension control, being able to improve how well you're engaging your back for stability, progressive technique, for example, of more advanced push-ups, so that way you're not doing endless repetitions and just going with a high volume approach. We also wanna balance things out with a higher intensity approach as well. And even just managing to improve things like how well you're moving through space, control in difficult positions, using different tools like rings or suspension straps, weight vests. The more ways that you can explore ways to make any sort of tr uh, training challenging, excuse me, a little caught in my throat, the more options you have to continue making progress without ramming yourself into that proverbial wall. Tip number two is don't make your goal to always push to your absolute maximum work capacity. In other words, how long and hard you can push yourself. Because it's a little bit of a myth in fitness that the only way you make progress is to continuously push yourself past your limits. And while you certainly do want to make progress, you don't necessarily always have to be pushing your absolute limits in order to make that happen. So with regard to the push-ups, for example, you could ascend to a higher level of push-up technique or you could be working on something like keeping your elbows in nice and tight and therefore you're making progress, but you may not necessarily be spending the next several weeks just doing as much as you can until you're just peeling yourself off the floor. In fact, a lot of strength athletes and collegiate athletes and professional athletes will long often advocate the idea of leave a little bit in the tank. It's perfectly fine to leave the gym or leave your workouts feeling like I still had a little bit left that I could have used because you can always do more work, but instead to shift your mindset more on productive work rather than just hard work for hard work's sake because there is a diminishing rate of return to every bit of work you invest into it and you have an exponential increase in cost for every set and every rep and every workout that you're doing. So instead, leaving a little in the tank, being mindful and focusing on what is the most productive work or when you're doing the best push-ups that you can and then leaving a little bit with still something to give will ensure you're not, again, pushing yourself against that limit that refuses to budge and you burn out. Tip number three is something I've advocated for quite a bit over the past few years, and I even have a new quick read for it over on reddeltaproject.com, all about utilizing adaptive training. And this one is really simple. It's simply because you have different levels of work capacity on a day-to-day -day or week-to-week, month-to-month basis. Sometimes you're just gonna have more time, more energy, and more motivation. 
And sometimes, like in the case of getting really sick for a week or so, you're just gonna have less energy and less motivation and less strength and less whatever resources you need in order to push yourself. So with adaptive training, you just use whatever you've got. You're not adhering to a dogmatic formula of, I've gotta do 500 push-ups a day, in which case you may not be adhering to any sort of progressive variables that are more important for your goal, like building strength, or you may be just overdriving things and using time and energy that is in short supply and you're more at a risk of burning yourself up, at least in an acute sense. With an adaptive approach, you just use whatever you got. If you have more time and energy and motivation, do a heck of a lot more, go for it. But if you have less time and energy and motivation, that's fine, go with a shorter workout, only do a few hard sets. You know, don't feel like you gotta hit the muscle from every single angle. Adapt your workouts to accommodate your circumstances. So again, you're not driving yourself into the ground relentlessly, but at the same time, you give yourself permission to do more if and when your ability to do so increases. And finally, the fifth tip, to avoid perpetual burnout and driving yourself into the ground, therefore, compromising or sacrificing your results entirely is use a very well-rounded variety approach in your training as a whole. And I know a simple approach, like I often advocate in a lot of my programs of using just a few uh, choice exercises or training modalities really helps to simplify things and make things efficient. Do incorporate other things, at least from a time to time basis. If you're really big into calisthenics, spend a few weeks doing the isometrics or kettlebells or working with free weights. If you're a runner and that's your main thing, hop on the exercise bike or take a kickboxing class and stuff. In other words, cross train because when we're really focusing all of our efforts into a narrow range of modalities, we burn out a lot faster, we just get kind of sick and tired and bored of doing the same thing, and we kind of yearn for a little bit of variety. Giving yourself more things that you can do, even temporarily from time to time just to give yourself some variety, will make it feel new, alive, and refreshing, and it's much better for mind, body, and lifestyle. And as long as you're just getting the basic fundamental objectives of your workouts met, you're not gonna be compromising your results in the slightest. Whew, okay, well, that's about all the energy I've got for today. I'm gonna to try and get some more food in my system here, but don't burn yourself out. No one's going to give you extra bonus points for driving yourself into the ground and how hard, much work and effort you put into your diet and exercise plans. Because always remember, the less effort and work you have to invest into being productive, the better. All right, I'll talk to you folks in the next video. Let me know if you have questions and stuff and all the resources I mentioned are down below in the description as well. Thank you very much for watching. Be fit and live free.